Now, you, nobody's entitled to a lot of money for recognizing that because it's a truism. It's like knowing that two and two equals four. And, but the investment professionals think they're helping you by arranging a dir dir diversification. An idiot could diversify a portfolio. And so I always knew from the very first, when I was a little boy, that the opportunities that were important that were going to come to me were few, and that the trick was to prepare myself for seizing the few that came. This is not the attitude they have at a big investment counseling thing. They think if they study a million things, they can know a million things. And, that, and of course, the result is almost nobody can outperform an index. Whereas I sit here with my Daily Journal stock, my Berkshire Hathaway stock, my holdings in Lilu's Asian fund, my Costco stock, and of course I'm outperforming everybody. And I'm 95 <laughs> years old, and I practically never have a transaction. And the answer is I'm right and they're wrong. And that's why it's worked for me and not for them. And you know, the question is, do you want to be more like me or more like them? <laughs> the, the idea of diversification makes sense to a point. If you don't know what you're doing and you want the standard result and not be embarrassed, well, of course, you can widely diversify. Now, you, nobody's entitled to a lot of money for recognizing that because it's a truism. It's like knowing that two and two equals four. And, but the investment professionals think they're helping you by arranging a dir, dir, Diversification, an idiot could diversify a portfolio, and, or a computer for that matter. And, and, but the whole trick of the game is to have, have a few times when you know that something is better than average and invest only where you have that extra knowledge. And then if you get just a few opportunities, that's enough. And what the hell does you care? You own three securities and J.P. Morgan Chase owns 100. You know, it's, what's wrong with owning a few securities? Warren always says if you lived in a growing town and you owned stock in three of the best enterprises in the town, isn't that diversified enough? The answer is, of course it is. They're all wonderful places. And that fortunes formula, which got so famous, which was a formula to tell people how much to bet on each transaction if you had a, an edge. And of course, the bigger your edge, the more close the transaction was to a certain winner, the more you should bet. And of course, there's mathematics behind it. But of course it's true. It's perfectly possible to buy, buy only one thing because the opportunity is so great and it's such a cinch, or only two or three. So the whole idea of diversification when you're looking for excellence is totally ridiculous. It doesn't work. It gives you an impossible task. What fun is it to do an impossible task over and over again? I find it agony. I just, who would want to do it? And, and I don't see why. My father had a client. He was a lawyer in Omaha. He had a client whose husband had a little soap company. And the guy died and my father sold the soap company. This woman was one of the richest people in town in the middle of the Depression. And what she had was a little soap company in a Vegas mansion in Omaha's best neighborhood. And they sold the soap company. She had a mansion in the best neighborhood and $300,000. But $300,000 in 1930 something was an incredible amount of money. A little hamburger was a nickel, a big hamburger was a dime, and the all-you-can-eat cafe in Omaha would, would feed you all you needed to stay alive for two bits a day. I mean, 300000 Well, she didn't hire an investment counselor. She didn't do anything. She's a wonderful old woman. And she just took that, and she divided it into five chunks. And she bought five stocks. I remember three of them, because I probated her estate. And it was, one of them was General Electric, one was Dow, one was DuPont, and I forget the other two. And then she never changed those stocks. She never paid any advisors. She never did anything. And she bought some municipal bonds. She never spent her income. 
and she bought some of this old bonds from time to time with the animals. By the time she died in the 50s, she had a million and a half dollars. No costs, no expenses. And I said, how did you decide to do that? And she said, well, she said, I thought electricity and chemistry were the coming things. You just chunked it all in and sat on her ass. <laughs> I always liked that little woman. <laughs> My kind of a girl. <laughs> and, but it's, it's rare. You know, it's, but if you stop to think about it, think of all the expense and palaver that she didn't have to listen to and all the trouble she avoided and zero costs. And of course, what people don't realize because they're so mathematically illiterate is if you make 5% and pay two of it to your advisors, you're not losing 40% of your future. You're losing 90%. Because over a long period of time, that little difference causes a 90% disadvantage to you. So it's hugely important 